to the last week of the regular term. Not so regular term really, but uh, the last week of the regular scheduled classes. And we are going to finish up with a couple of really cool mechanisms. Um, chapter 10 is a good one to read part of. It's a good idea to know the alcohol functional group. It's often used by organic chemists. It's very important biologically and culturally and many reactions of alcohols are very important to the workings of our bodies. Substitution of alcohols is one of the experiments we were going to do in lab the last couple of weeks of the semester and we will still do a little talking about that because it's a really nice clean reaction to turn an alcohol into a halide. So that's a nice substitution reaction that's very useful synthetically and it's worth talking about a little bit. So substitution of alcohols is a couple pages in the book there you can read. And what we're going to do is, as usual, just go through one mechanism very specifically so that you get a little introduction to how this type of reaction goes. Overall, you can take an alcohol, say, say ROH, plus a hydrohalic acid, and that will give us an alkyl chloride plus water. So some people might call it a double displacement or a metathesis reaction. Um, it's a substitution reaction, and it's interesting because normally the OH group will not want to leave. And so um, pulling an OH minus off of an alkyl cation is virtually impossible. Um, it can be done at really high temperatures or whatever, but what we're going to do is use essentially a built-in catalyst, a strong acid to convert the alcohol into a water that's attached to the alkyl group. So that'll make the reaction go. Now a very common reaction you're going to see would be tert butanol, which has a different systematic name, but tert butanol would be T butyl alcohol. And if you count the longest chain, one, two, three carbons, it's really a propanol with the alcohol group on the second carbon. So we can call it 2-propanol. And then also off the second carbon, as we number them 1, 2, and 3, off the second carbon is a methyl. So 2-methyl, two 2-propanol two would be the systematic name for tertiary butyl alcohol, another one of its historic names. And some people would call it T-butanol. So you can imagine, being an organic chemist, you have to know the formal names and the nicknames and the common names of many of the chemicals if you're going to communicate with another organic chemist. And when this reacts, the tert-butanol, with hydrochloric acid or any other hydro hydrohalic acid, so you can have HCl, HBr, HI, any of those, that's again the nice thing about these reactions is they can be generalized such that if you have an alcohol and it meets any really strong acid, it's going to be protonated. The way we draw the mechanism out is the lone pair on the base goes and grabs the H plus off the acid, and you've heard me say that a bunch of times if you watch the videos. If we had traditional lectures, we'd be reviewing more and we'd be seeing this a lot, but the, the base in this case the alcohol, is going to have a lone pair of electrons that will go take the H plus off of the acid, so hydrochloric acid, a very strong acid, and then the bonding pair of electrons in the acid becomes a lone pair. So when you do that, then you end up with the protonated alcohol, plus chloride. So protonated alcohol plus the chloride. And when that'll happen then is now you have a tertiary group with a de decent leaving group on it. So from here it'll go by an SN1 reaction. So we protonate the alcohol 
to create a better leaving group here. The OH- isn't going to leave a neutral molecule, but the water is going to leave. And so this pair of electrons will go with the water, and that will make our familiar intermediate that we've seen before of a tertiary carbocation. Tertiary carbocation and that will produce water product. And then once we have the tertiary carbocation, then this chlorine can go in and bond, and that will give us our tertiary butyl chloride, also known as 2-chloro, 2-methyl propane, or tert butyl chloride from the chloride nucleophile reacting with the carbocation electrophile. So again, we've seen this language before. Nucleophiles are looking for positive charge. Electrophiles are looking for negative charge. And if they find each other, they often form a nice bond and so the carbon-chlorine bond is formed when the lone pair on the chloride nucleophile finds the bare carbocation and can form a bond. So this reaction, tert-butanol, with hydrochloric acid is a catalyzed SN1 reaction where first we have to throw in the hydrochloric acid to protonate and then once we have this protonated then the water can leave once the water's left, then we have our carbon ca carbocation intermediate like we would have with other SN1 reactions. And then the nucleophile can trap the carbocation and give us product. So a nice, relatively straightforward three-step reaction, protonation of the alcohol, removal of the leaving group, and then trapping of the carbocation with the chloride to form the final product. So super nice, not too difficult. And this is something that you should definitely know for the lab because this is a reaction we would have performed and I'll go ahead and talk through so that again, you get another iteration of this. We'll also talk about a side reaction that we have to avoid in the lab by, my, by controlling the lab conditions. So there we go, nice substitution of an alcohol with hydrochloric acid.